Hi, this is Natalie Rydstrom with this week's SBR Industry News Update, reporting for sportsbookreview.com. First up, SBR is pleased to report that a bet revolution NFL betting dispute has been resolved, as reported by SBR earlier this week. A player had a $650 wager voided after the outcome had been determined. The punt was on the New York Giants' first half money line, priced at minus 130. SBR spoke with Bet Revolution management, who acknowledged that they intended to offer a different price, though the one offered was relatively in market. The player received a full credit for his winning bet. Next up, a newcomer to the SBR ratings guide is Marathon Bet, which has been assessed with a starter rating of B-. Marathon Bet has two sides of their business. Their .com domain is licensed in Curacao, whilst their .co.uk is licensed by the Oldney Gaming Control Commission. Parent company Panbet Limited operates multiple land-based shops throughout the UK, holding a license with the UK Gambling Commission. Intrade is leaving the U.S. market. The decision was announced on the 26th of November in a letter to U.S. account holders. Intrade cited regulatory concerns and mounting legal pressure in their decision to pull out, giving players a deadline of December 31st to withdraw all their payments from their accounts. An extract from the letter reads as follows. We understand this announcement may come as a surprise and a disappointment, and we apologize for the short notice and haste required to deal with this. We would like to sincerely thank all U.S. customers for their custom, support and loyalty over the years. For more details and to read the full in-trade letter to U.S. account holders, please check on Newswire. Now, to expand on this subject, I'd like to welcome lead dispute analyst Justin Seven to the programme. Justin, what are your thoughts about this SCC charge? Uh, it raises the threat that all their international banking will get shut down. And this was very similar to what happened in 2006 with the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act. And when, a, when the U.S. government paints a bullseye on you and says what you're doing is illegal in our country, you have two options. You can stop doing that in the U.S. or you can operate on the gray. So if you look at how all the publicly traded or large sports books reacted, they pulled out of the U.S., and Intrade is doing the same thing. You know, they're, they're going to pull out so they'll be able to pay the players. If they don't, the consequence would be they can no longer do bank transfers pretty much anywhere in the world. So obviously they have to pull out. So, so they're taking good steps, really? Yes. It, it's the only choice they have unless they can win the, the, this uh, legal battle, and I don't think they'll be able to win that. Okay, right. Now, last week we spoke about two bets and their claim of past posting on a soccer match. Do you have any updates? Yes, they still failed to provide any proof that there was a past post, and then they, two bet, went back to their first story that this was some kind of syndicate betting. Again, relying just on the fact that multiple players bet the same event and were from the same area, uh, but they had no direct relation, no trace, you know, no overlapping IP addresses, no common, you know, money methods or anything just the allegation that these people uh, are from the same area and bet the same events. Right, and I understand this complaint has been submitted to the Malta LGA. Uh, do you know how that got resolved? Yes, I do, and I would call it a disaster. Uh, if you look at this excerpt from their opinion, they basically said that uh, if several people bet on the same event from the same area, that that's sufficient to show a syndicate. So, I mean, this is the quite possibly the worst ruling I have ever seen. In this case, Malta LGA is rubber stamping a decision to steal player funds only because, in this case, the requirement would be two people from the same area bet on the same event. Okay, and for those of us who don't know, what is a syndicate? A syndicate in the sports betting context is not really defined. I don't think there's a definition of it on their website, and most websites don't define it. But there are, you know, I'm going to say there's three fairly common definitions. In a sports betting scope, if your goal is to steal money from a player, uh, your definition of syndicate is um, any two players working together. A uh, more common definition of syndicate would be, uh, in the sports betting context, would be a group of people who are contributing their energies towards a common goal. So, for example, you may have analysts, data scrapers, bettors, you know. Um, and then the third, I guess, the public meaning of a syndicate would be some kind of secret criminal organization but that's very different from anything in the sports betting context. 
So basically, like, what's the, the problem here is you've got sort of six friends, or maybe not in this case, but say if you did have some friends who all decide, you know, they, they conferred and they all decided to sort of bet one game or something, that's actually classified as a syndicate and is illegal. According to the Malta LGA, yes, that's correct. And you would face the same thing if, for example, Dr. Bob released a play and several people bet it. Or if you and I were watching Federer and he was limping at the start of a tennis match, and we said, oh, look, Federer looks slow. Let's bet on his opponent. Then you and I, according to Two Bet and Malta <clears throat> LGA's definition, would be a syndicate. And do they really have grounds to call this illegal? I, I just would have thought that something like this is quite common practice. Uh, yes, it is common practice. And this is a, a sham ruling. And I mean, it is so bad. If I were rating regulatory authorities, I would give Malta LGA an F. Right, okay. Now, moving on now. Uh, do you have any disputes that you're working on which, say, involve popular sports books? Yes, I have one. A player playing at M88, a mansion book, uh, had a balance of 100 million IDP, Indonesian currency, which is worth about 10,400 US dollars. The player's balance, his account was closed, his balance was seized, and Mansion gave him no explanation. And I'm trying to find out what's going on, but they haven't been too helpful yet. And is this common practice with Mansion 888? I would have thought you've got a sort of a good rapport with these guys. This is the first case like this I have had against them. Okay, well, do keep us up to date with that, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Natalie. And thank you to you for tuning in.